who's with me right now, has made a debunk of my B12 uh, video, and so I guess we'll be talking about that. Um, that's really all much I have to say. I'm pretty much a kind of get into the content type of person, so without further ado, here's Conscientious Omnivore. He can introduce himself, he can introduce him to, me, to uh, his viewers. Yep. But I'm pretty sure everyone already knows who both of us are. Yep. Hey, everybody. <coughs> Welcome back to Conscience Sundivore. I have my uh, guest today, Dr. Avi. Happy to have him on. Um, as you guys have probably seen, I have done a video response um, about his video regarding vitamin B12, um, specifically talking about how uh, people like early humans would have gotten uh, sufficient B12, you know, back in the early stages of human development. So we're talking like 150,000 years ago, etc. that kind of thing. So um, yeah, uh, I think if you don't mind, I, I would uh, I would want to get into it as well um, straight off the bat. Before we even start, kind of talking about where we disagree, I just want to spend a few moments talking about where I think we do agree, and then maybe just jump in mm -hmm. to clarify if you feel like I'm uh, you know misrepresenting something or misspeaking on your behalf. I think where we agree is that uh, you know from an ethical standpoint as a vegan. Um, regardless of what we believe uh, may or may not have happened 150,000 years ago and how humans may or may not have gotten B, uh, B12, um, we don't think it's a good reason for modern day humans to not eat a vegan diet um, because of some kind of nature fallacy or unnatural fallacy or whatever. Um, and that uh, the main point is that people should just be happy to take a uh, supplement, get their B12 and um, not have to be um, you know, kind of worried about whether or not it was possible 150,000 years ago to do so or not, um, because I don't think from an ethical standpoint that that should be used as any kind of justification for what we are doing today. Would you agree that that is? I, I, I would agree, and I would also make a, a stronger point. I would, I would take it out a step further, actually. So yes, I agree with everything that was just said. Um, why anyone would care is I have no idea. I don't know why. I mean, I do have an idea about why people make these arguments. Uh, that being said, even if it turns out that we couldn't, it has no bearing on whether we should or should not. In fact, I would make it a step further um, because of something known, I guess maybe we can go into it, maybe not, called pleiotropic antagonism. Whereas if you equal, whereas if you equalize, um, it's led me to the conclusion where if you equalize the behaviors, uh, the advantages of given behaviors, uh, the ancestral and evolutionarily consistent option actually is likely to cause more harm than the other option if you equalize all other advantages. I think it, it actually would be a reason uh, to not, um, if, if we relied on animal products for B12 and that was the only way we could do it, and then we have another diet that has all the same advantages as the ancestral diet. Um, and can also get B12 through, through non-ancestral reasons. Actually, believe it or not, there's more of a Bayesian reason to go with the non-natural diet for health and the natural diet as an inductive reason. But that has to do with pleiotropic antagonism and how that plays into evolution, and that's not the topic of discussion. But the further point I would make is that it's actually, if anything, a reason to not be an omnivore and to be a vegan. So that's a much more complex discussion. So uh, I don't. I don't think we need to go there. But the thing is that uh, in the past, um, you know, I don't think again that uh, it would be a good enough reason to justify other actions either. So the way that uh, you know housing was done, or the way. Oh, I'm just other... getting from the stream that I can't. They can't hear you on the stream. So let me see what I. What's, I don't know if I could do much about that. Uh, audio input capture. I, I mean, I don't know how it's not coming through. Um. I'll Can just ask talk? on my end too. Um, I see uh, Leon is on. Hi, Leon, and he's saying that it's lagging. Um, that unfortunately, I think, is from my PC, but that would probably just be the video. Hopefully, the audio is okay. I'm gonna just quickly type and ask if uh, the audio is okay on this end. Let me see what I can do um, for the OBS. So I have a window capture. Oh, audio input capture. Let's see. Um, I have my microphone and. Let's see, I have, okay, microphone, and I, oh, I need uh, another audio capture, that's why. Okay, so, audio input capture two. Um, loopback audio, let's do that. I definitely okay, have see. both, uh, in fact, I'm peaking on mine, so I'm going to just move you down just a smidge. Can you, can you hear me? Um, can, let me just, I can't hear him, that's unfortunate. 
I don't know why that is. Um, Remember, people are telling see. me that uh, even the audio is breaking up sometimes okay. on my end. Oh, we're not had. That's, that's unfortunate. Um, we may have to restart the stream if that's the case. Um, let me see. Window capture, Discord, audio capture, audio input capture. Are you sure you don't want Isaac to just help stream it? He has everything built up. He won't talk. Um, uh, no, I, I don't want him on. Um, okay. Oh, I, oh, here we go. So maybe we could do this. Audio input capture two. Okay, so now actually this might this might work. Can you try talking now? Yep, I'm here. Testing, testing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. Let me ask. Um, let me ask my stream if they can if that has worked. Um, so can, oh, it's just an echo now? Oh, that's not unfortunate, let's see. Yikes. Mm. Let's see, so, uh, there's got to be a way to, what is your tool device? It's annoying on... Like, I've got a laptop open just to see what people are seeing, and um, from my channel, at least, it looks like the picture oh. is completely frozen. No. Try to do this. And add monitors. Okay. Now try, uh, try talking now. Yep, here I am. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Testing. Okay. This this might work. Okay, great. Okay, I think I figured it out. Um, figured it out on the fly. Okay, so someone will probably just have to do a timestamp. So I just want to make sure with my uh, chat that they can both hear me and they can. So it was just. Um, I'm actually peeking a little bit. Okay, it's just uh, all the technical issues are worked out. But that's the outcome of this. Um, whether it was the case or whether it was not the case that our ancestors had derived their B12 from plant sources or animal sources. We both agree that this way, it wouldn't, I would take it a step further. I would say, um, I would make a pleiotropic antagonistic argument for why if it, was, if it was not the case that our ancestors got B12 from plant sources, actually, it may even be more, that's a whole separate, but so point being, um, what we're to. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's, that's an important part. <clears throat> an important uh, distinction to make, I guess, just to make sure that everybody knows they're cited or made that are most. Well, before I even do that, I think there was something you wanted you wanted to uh, to to go over. Was that the only thing you wanted to go over that that thing, or did you want? Well, I mean, I think just in general terms, um, I'm curious what you think. Um, well, based on watching your video, I'm mm -hmm. I'm led to believe that your um, your take is that. Uh, there's no way that people would have been, um, you know, fully herbivorous or even mostly herbivorous uh, 150,000 years ago because the information you have uh, about uh, B12 um, absorption and availability leads you to believe that it would have been possible for them to get enough to basically survive. And um, so they would have had to been eating, um, you know, animal sources of uh, B12. But sure. So, so well, I don't. I didn't say the first part either. Um, so, the first and foremost, I don't think it's impossible. I wouldn't make. It's, there are very few claims that I would say it's impossible. That there's no possible way it could happen. Um, that's a very limit. There's a very limited amount of things that I would say that I would use the word impossible for. I approach these situations like a Bayesian. So, I have my priors. If there's literally no information about anything, I take the um, principle of indifference, where my priors are 50-50, and the more data that I uncover, uh, my needle sh toward belief shifts one way or another. So, unless I find something like a logical contradiction, or something that violates the laws of physics, I would then in that case I would say it's either a logical impossibility or a physical impossibility. If I'm not doing one of those things, it's just the needle that's the ticker. It ticks in the side of, I believe, weakly, I believe strongly, um, so I believe strongly, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think based on the data, all the available data we have, which is actually more robust than a lot of people think, I don't put all the sources in the video. I put the sources that people use to make the claim in the video. But based on all the available data, I think there is, A, no reason to believe that we had gotten our B12 from, uh, from plants. 
and B, that based on all the available data, we have reason to believe that they couldn't have. Um, maybe it's not, it's not, maybe it's the case that it's not impossible, but all the data seems to lead us to that conclusion. As far as what, how I think they did get it, I will point out two things. The first thing I will point out is that even if I had no idea of how our ancestors got B12, it wouldn't negate my view on saying that we did not get our B12 from this source. So if I say, well, I have enough probably not A. Now, even if I had no idea if it was B, C, D, E, or F, it still wouldn't be an attack on my position that it's not A. It would be an interesting academic question. I have, but even if I had no information whatsoever on how we got it, it still wouldn't negate my position on we did not get it from source A. Yep, I don't have an issue with that. Um, that's not what okay. I'm really trying to get at by asking cool. what you think mm -hmm. uh, we did get it from. But to go back to something you just said a moment ago, where you mm -hmm. said um, you know that you're you're not saying it's impossible or what have you, but Mm -hmm. The very nature of the video is kind of inflammatory in the sense that you're basically saying that if somebody makes these kinds of claims, they're wackos. I mean, that's what the title yeah. says. Yeah. So um, now, you know, wackos, that's kind of what yeah. I'm getting at is that that sure. that makes it sound pretty definitive. That's like saying like you know whatever. There's no such thing as gravity or whatever. Where you know you you just said mo a moment ago that uh, you're mm -hmm. fairly certain or that you're you think it's highly improbable. But but mm -hmm. by calling somebody a wacko just because they think that maybe sure. that is the case, that's not exactly the same thing. So by wacko, yeah. So the reason we to use the word wacko um, is in response to the specific claims that people are making that shows that we they assert that this this given study, for example, um, shows that we could have gotten it. And then when you actually look at the study. It's very clear the study actually shows, if anything, it indicates we couldn't have gotten it from that source. That's what I mean by a wacko, by someone saying, if someone comes in and says, hey, look, um, we were carnivores. Humans are carnivores, and they show you a study. And then the study says that humans are herbivores. It's like, yeah, you're, you're kind of a wacko for, do, for doing that. It's like, I'm not saying that everyone who believes that humans are carnivores are wackos necessarily maybe they're just not as well read of the data or whatnot but if they read a paper that says humans are not carnivores and they and they cite that paper to say that humans are carnivores yeah those people are pretty wacko and so for the that's how how I'm using that word I'm using that and that's that's also why I didn't cite every single study in the book on a lake on all the different lakes by the way we can go through those if you'd like but the, what I did cite are the specific studies that people who have been making this claim have been using. And I think wacko is a very appropriate term for them because they are literally citing a study to affirm that they can that affirm their position when the very study is evidence against their position. Okay, that, that's fair enough. I think that's a good explanation um, of a difference. Um, you know, I'm happy to look at like, you know, specific studies. And I, I think one thing that may not have come across to you from my video is that I'm, I'm not actually making a, um, taking a position saying that we were indeed herbivorous or fully herbivorous or even mostly herbivorous. I actually, um, you know, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, the things that I took issue with is the uh, the other kind of aspects of, of the video, whereas um, I think, you know, the the evidence you, you did bring now, you've, you've explained why you've brought it. I don't think that was explained well enough in your video for me to understand that that's why you only included that amount of information. And um, I think to extrapolate that out to say definitely or even most probably or highly probably just based on the few studies you cited, that's where, what I take uh, issue with or took issue with. Um, so that's like one point of clarification that I wanted to make. The uh, the other thing is that... Um, you yeah, know, so just, just to close off on that point of clarification. So the reason, uh, the amount of studies that were cited, the studies that were cited were the studies um, cited that um, clearly um, either narrowed down to a claim that was made about a different study or was the same study itself that the individuals making this claim were citing. Had they been citing other sources, I would have included that too. Um, it's not the case that there's, for example, just one source of water uh, on B12. Um, there are uh, 
over five, if not over 10 sources of water on B12 that I could think of off the top of my head. Um, there's uh, an analysis of the, uh, uh, lake in Israel. There's an analysis of two analysis of lakes in Japan. There are analyses of lakes in um, Oregon. There's an analysis of nine lakes in England. There's, I mean, this is just off the top of my head. I'm rattling them off, but sure. the, the, and the same thing for soil too. There's various different forests that have been analyzed. There's different soil lands that. So the reason for using a forest is it's a natural source. It's not bombarded with pesticides or anything that would in, interrupt the natural production of B12. And we and th the point is that I'm not just looking at a study and saying, "Aha, case closed, checkmate." Um, I do a robust analysis when I form a view on this. Um, I can clarify that if you'd like. I can put in the video description and say, oh, by the way, there's a whole bunch more studies that show my position is even stronger than this. Like, that's fine, too, if you'd like. Um, well, I think, but yeah, the, I, you know, yeah, the, looking at, um, you know, water sources pretty much now, um, maybe some of them are older. I think, uh, mm -hmm. I think maybe the one you cited was like an older mm -hmm. one, right? It was like 50 years ago or whatever. Um, but uh, but my point is that that is not um, anywhere indicative of what water sources may have been like 150,000 years ago. We simply don't know. Even in the most pristine um, remote areas, like you know you mentioned, like a mountain or a forest or what have you, um, there is uh, you know increasing levels of pollution throughout the world. Like you go into the deepest uh, you know trenches of the ocean now, and there's there's microplastic there. Um, so it, it's just a uh, that that's kind of my my main point is that yeah. uh, none of the studies I've seen give me any indication of what the water may have been like 150,000 years ago when we're talking no, about. Of course. Well, well, sure, sure, that's fine. Um, the so the first thing to say to that is so you may be able to teleport yourself back uh, 100,000 years in any body of water or soil. That being said, there are ways to make inferences about. That. There are, uh, so for example, if the difference in the conditions, if anything, would favor more B12 production and not anything, the differences would be on your favor and not the other. The other thing to say is that, okay, that's fine. But I, as a Bayesian, I'm still not saying it's not impossible. I'm not saying that just because I can't teleport back 100,000 years ago and look at the, that not that it's not impossible. But again, as more and more data comes in, my needle shifts a given way. I lean very strongly, highly improbable. And you'd really have to make a good case for like, okay, why do you think the conditions that in some forest, not even attached to the water where there are microplastics, um, in some area that isn't really inhabited by many humans that much, if any at all, what exact, what exact differences do you think were there a thousand, just a thousand years ago? 